Hi, I'm Matt Wilson, Senior Product Manager at GitLab, focusing on our security stage. I'm here to talk about shifting left for DevSecOps. No, farther left than you're probably thinking. So before we dive into talking about shifting left, I wanna highlight why improving secure software development is so critical. So at the end of 2019, the estimated total cost for all data breaches, now this is just data breaches, globally was about $2.1 trillion. That's not a typo. This includes all damage to the impacted systems, remediation costs, losses due to reputational damage, remuneration, regulatory penalties, and the like. Now, the average data cost or breach cost is about $9 million for US-based companies right now. This goes up dramatically if the security incident involved a large loss of customer data records. The current estimate for very large breaches, over 50 million records lost, is approaching $400 million in total cost. So if we know the consequences of insecure software, why do these problems persist? Well, for starters, we're producing more software faster. And as we start to integrate more and more of our lives in society digitally, the attractiveness of these targets is increasing exponentially. And all too often, the speed leads to mistakes. For example, using an insecure unpatched third-party library or forgetting to update a vulnerable container image. These are easy yet highly preventable oversights. Now, it's also from an attacker's perspective, far easier to recycle a successful exploit over and over again than to create a new one. There's also the application, application constellation challenge. Adequately covering your application's attack surface typically required multiple expensive tools with varying levels of integration capabilities. Picking best of breed tools and stitching them together is a common yet costly and cumbersome approach that does not typically meet the workflow needs of a modern engineering organization. The industry also needs to sort of grow beyond the mindset that shifting left means putting something like a SaaS tool in the developer's IDE and calling it done. So that approach is a start, but it's only partially shifting some of the security responsibility onto engineers. It also does nothing to increase collaboration between the engineering and the security teams. I'd like you to envision with me an era where security, instead of being separate and being passed back and forth, is actually baked in to the software development lifecycle, where you can have a single source of truth and collaboration suitable for the modern software team. Scaling security is extremely important because it means not only empowering developers, but it's the only way that you're going to scale out protection for your entire application. So let's look a little bit about why this is so important to shift left. The traditional approach is leaving security for security teams, which typically means at the very end, often scanning or testing right before production. Now, if you leave it until the end of the cycle, it not only increases risk that you're not going to test everything in time before release, it increases your cost. The closer you can get to the actual time of development when it comes to addressing any sort of, be it a defect or security, vulnerability, the lower the cost because it hasn't gone through all the different stages and touched a lot of different hands. If you can keep it close to development, the developers also don't have context switching. They get to receive immediate feedback and they can fix those vulnerabilities as part of the normal SDLC process. On the flip side, if you're fixing things earlier, your security teams, they have less vulnerabilities to deal with, less to triage right as if something's about to go out to production and they can spend their time focusing on more proactive, other high value work. So just imagine, what if your developers could find and fix 20% of the vulnerabilities before they ever got to the security teams? Or about 50%. That's a significant impact on both the development and the security team's time. So we could actually quantify this a little bit. In fact, the cost savings from shifting left from both security and defect remediation was quantified years ago by the National Institutes of Standards and Technology. Now, what they really put a number on is that early discovery of software defects and vulnerabilities reduces fixed costs or fixing costs. Now, when you think about it, this makes sense because once something leaves development, 
It goes through a number of other hands, such as your software QA teams, IT potentially, DevOps, security. All that work has to get redone if something gets found right at the very end in production. So the cycle back cost is extremely high. Now, the opposite, of course, is true. The earlier you can catch something, the lower you can keep your overall cost of development. It's much more cost effective to find that problem. For example, let's say in a manufacturing facility, if you found it during an early tooling setup or an assembly step versus waiting until the finished product is actually leaving the assembly line. So if you embed security within the DevOps process, it actually has a quantifiable cost savings when it comes to addressing security issues. You can actually look at the number of things that didn't make it downstream and put a dollar cost savings on that. So by putting developers first, you can actually close the gap between finding and fixing vulnerabilities while reducing risk and your overall cost. So as you begin shifting left on this DevSecOps journey, I want you to consider some of the outcomes you hope to achieve. Common things we hear are, you know, perhaps it's greater efficiencies from having a single view of your application security posture for both developers and security teams. Maybe it's improving audits because you want to have your security processes well-documented as well as heavily automated. Now, for reducing risk, security uh, exposure is top of mind. Think of what it'd be like to have greater visibility into your application risks at the beginning of the development process, rather than getting a security report right before launch to production, where you have to make that hard trade-off of, do you continue with the production rollout and accept the risk of vulnerabilities you know are in the code? Or do you potentially delay that and try to get it set back for rework? And if cost predictability is a key driver of an interest in shifting left, consider the impact of baking vulnerability discovery and remediation into the SDLC rather than having it sit outside and downstream from it, where it has less insight and virtually no, no visibility from an engineering perspective. Now, perhaps you've already looked at this shift left, moving security closer to the engineering side. You probably have many of the similar driving factors that you see there on the left. Perhaps your company is moving from a legacy monolithic application to microservices you're re-architecting, or maybe you've got an internal initiative to containerize your key applications and move them to a public cloud. Now, what you might've also encountered are some similar challenges with your own security teams. Some of these issues you see on the right. Now, these security teams, the AppSec teams often operate separately from engineering and they sit outside of the software development lifecycle. Being downstream affords them really little to no visibility of what gets made, when or how. So the security findings are against a completed application post-process and the, secu the security check doesn't really have the kind of insights that you would need to have a deeper level of understanding of where some of the vulnerabilities are coming from. Well, that means that vulnerabilities can't easily be tied to the actual lines of code where they originate. And then depending on the release cycle times, that delay that I've mentioned between coding and vulnerability discovery, it could be weeks or potentially even months, depending on your application uh, development cadence. So this compounds the difficulty in identifying the problem area and creating a fix as the original developer or team has long since moved on to, onto new code. And it also perpetuates a lot of tensions that many companies experience where the development teams, they feel like security is just throwing things over the wall into the middle of their current development cycles that has nothing to do with what they're currently working on. And on the flip side, the security teams feel like they're just having to deal with things that kind of get thrown over the wall to them from the engineering teams, stuff that made it out of development and in, you know, into the production code base. So let's look at a typical vulnerability testing cycle. This is what you might see in a traditional AppSec process. So you've got the developer who is working on some code. They are checking in code. If you have a continuous integration, you've got your CI processes running. Maybe you're also set up for continuous deployment, in which case that code is actually moving automatically to a test environment. With traditional AppSec tools, a DAST or dynamic application security test, 
it's only done near the end of that cycle because it requires a working running application to test. So there's no source code availability for it. The individual, the individual developer's work has already been merged into the main branch. And typically it's in a dedicated test environment where you might be performing QA tests alongside these dynamic tests. Now, because a DAST test occurs so late in that life cycle, it's at the very end, there was kind of a, a need to do something a little bit more to, to try to tie what was being found back to the code. So this is where interactive application security tests or IASs were born. The idea is that instrumenting the application allows automatically sort of testing and tying back some of these vulnerabilities to the place in the source code where it came from. Now, the intent was to enable developers and to try to bake security more into that engineering process, but it still requires a working test application at the very end of that process before they get any feedback. And then there's the additional added burden of instrumenting the app properly to get valid results out of an IS test. So this is very inefficient and you're really waiting until the very last second for any feedback to the developer. So let's compare this to one shifted left testing model. So here you can see the developer is doing the same thing. They're working on code, they're committing code, it's running through CI pipelines. But here we actually have security tests happening in the developer's feature branch. This is prior to merging it with the main branch. Because we've also got source code available at this early stage, you can run other scanning technologies such as static analysis, secret detection, license compliance, and dependency checking. Now you may notice there is a review app there. This is actually something unique that GitLab offers. And it really, what it is, is a ephemeral test environment that spins up as part of the CI pipeline. And it allows running your dynamic security scans and other post-deployment tests prior to actually merging changes with your main branch. So the developer is getting to see results immediately of every change that they're making. They're getting feedback right away from every single commit. As soon as the CI pipeline finishes, they know whether or not there were vulnerabilities and license risks because it's shown inside that pipeline, part of the natural workflow. Now they can see if everything passed and if it didn't, they get to see that too, along with any information to help them remediate the flaw. The developer quickly can iterate and resolve these vulnerabilities. And what's interesting about that is that means the AppSec team may never see many of them because they're already identified and ideally resolved before the code ever leaves the developer's desk, so to speak. Now the security teams, they're still part of this, but they can get involved to do things like review any outstanding issues, uh, consult on any tricky vulnerabilities to resolve. There may be still requirements to grant exceptions. They can do that as well and provide additional feedback to developers. Now, of course, once the developer finishes updating their code, they can then merge it downstream into the main branch. And so what's being deployed has already gone through an extensive level of security checking and cleanup. Now, I really like this quote by the CISO of VMware, your most important security product won't be a security product. And I think that really holds true because shift left is about more than trying to dump a bunch of tools onto the engineering teams. It involves a lot of development tools, it's workflow, it's fostering that mindset of collaboration and really driving home the point that security is everyone's responsibility. So it has to go definitely beyond just adding additional security tools. It's really an entire mentality shift for an organization. So let's take a slightly different look at that developer flow again. This could be any particular development setup you've got on the bottom line there that your master or your main branch, which you would typically see deployed out to production. And then along the top there, this is a feature branch. Now, this could be something a team is working in, or ideally, it's actually for that individual developer, just for the work that he or she is focusing on right now. You'll see that security testing, it's embedded 
right in the middle of that creation process. So you're moving, you're moving security into the developer workflow for the fast feedback that you need, especially in a modern agile development process that many organizations have adopted or are still looking to adopt. So you'll note since it's right after the CI pipelines run, it's before a step where you can actually get any sort of you know, review feedback from security teams and there is an, you can insert approvals there as well. The approvals from the security team fit right in line with your application development process. So any security issues have a very well-defined context of just that feature under development. So you're not looking at the totality of a full application. You can actually pinpoint exactly when a vulnerability was introduced by because it is isolated to that particular feature. And by handling the remediation as part of the cycle, it ensures only clean security tested code makes it out to production. So that approval step, if you have that as part of your, your CI workflow, you can actually block merging if there are any issues that are not either granted an exemption or are not remediated prior to, prior to merge. Now we focused a lot about advantages for developers. So I wanna talk a little bit about some of the upside for security professionals. When you automate everything, security teams, they kind of get an additional peace of mind that the necessary checks are happening every single code commit because it's enforced by the systems that ideally you've put in place to do this. They should absolutely be involved in the continuous integration setup process to help define templates and scanning configurations. Now this gives them ownership as well as a sense of collaboration with the engineering teams because they're building something to use together. The results, this, uh, the result is earlier visibility into any potential risks with the opportunity to remediate those risks while they are still low to no impact because they haven't made it to production yet. So you're also shifting the detection and in some cases or a lot of cases, the remediation responsibility off of the security teams by moving it earlier into the process. Now, this is going to improve your cost predictability as well because your security checks are now an integral part of your SDLC instead of sitting outside and downstream from it where you have much higher potential variability. Now, an interesting side effect of shifting your security into the DevOps process is an improved relationship between engineering and security teams. And this is something that I've witnessed firsthand because no longer are you getting vulnerabilities sort of thrown over the wall back and forth between the two groups. Also gone is a lot of the friction that leads up to that release process when developers are sort of crossing their fingers that no major security issues are gonna be found in that last few days before launch. The closer it gets, the more high stakes it is that there's going to be a showstopper found at the very last minute. Because the security issues have already been detected and fixed during the development process if you were doing the right kind of diligence with all of your scanning. Now, if needed, developers can collaborate with security on any tricky vulnerabilities. And what you're gonna find is that a lot of the old silos are gonna start to come down and it will feel like one large team instead of two isolated groups. Now I'll leave you with what I consider required capabilities for any solution that's gonna support a successful shift left. And there are many tools out there that can facilitate some or all of this journey. I think top of the list is scanning code at the time of commit. This is gonna let developers address the security problems early and as part of their normal workflow. As we saw, this is where the remediation cost is also lowest. You wanna look for a robust set of security testing capabilities. So like so many things in security, this is one case where more tends to be better. You don't wanna rely on only a DAST or a SAST, a static scan. You wanna to look to apply multiple scanning testing technologies. This is gonna provide the biggest potential reduction in your security and compliance risk. As we discussed earlier, automating security processes as part of your DevOps flow is an important way to prevent vulnerabilities from reaching production. You leverage standardized CI templates with security scanning and approval flows to enforce clean code in the main branch. Any necessary exceptions you should be able to document those as part of the approval process in that same system. This is gonna keep everything in one place and greatly simplify any audit needs. You want to make sure that your 
solutions have highly flexible integration capabilities. This is important because there's are there are many high quality open source and commercial scanning and security tools. Your company probably already has one or more of these in house. So you want to leverage that existing investment while looking for complementary capabilities of other tools. And then finally, look for a flat cost structure with any of the solutions that you acquire. So ideally, you're going to be charged only by license seat, and that includes unlimited usage of the security tool. This is going to make the unit economics of adding additional team resources highly predictable. Because if your costs are predictable, there's going to be a temptation to only run the security checks on what's critical. This is going to lead back to the bad habits of infrequent checks downstream where the work happens, downstream from where the work happens. So the true cost savings is going to come from security being an embedded, indelible part of your DevOps process. So I hope you enjoy this and take away that integrating security into your SDLC is both possible and necessary for modern software development. I wish you well on your journey to shift left and a tree true DevSecOps. Thank you.